Hi, I'm Ellie from crystallinks.com. Today is Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. Uh, today, I just wanted to talk about something a lot of people who are going back to the workplace here in New York have been discussing. They really don't want to go back. They feel that they don't want to do the commute. They are comfortable at home. They don't have to be sitting in sweats all day. They can put on something nice, you know, because there's Zoom business meetings and things of that kind. But it's the whole commuting, it's the whole dealing with the corporate environment and office dramas. Dramas, no matter who you work for, where you go, like say like 90% of offices have dramas. He picked this one over me, this is this, that's that. Why? I mean, yesterday I read a man who told me he's 65, he'll be 66 November 2022. And it's like all of a sudden out of the blue, they were already phasing him out. They, he works for the city. They took away his overtime. He just sat here perplexed as to why they just didn't let him do the time till 68, 66, and then move on. But apparently from everything clients have taught me, nothing's fair in the business world. We know it's not fair in politics and it apparently is not fair in business. Some people, can do well working with others. Other people have problems. They just can't work well taking information, taking um, authority from whoever their authority figures are, who probably are doing things wrong anyway. Going into the workplace is as detrimental for some children, not all children, for some children who get bullied in school and that's what it's really about, being taken advantage of, being bullied, the hours, the time, the commute, the attire, the, the everything, the gossip, all of that. And they just can't do it anymore. They've been away, let's say, even for 15 months. It's June. So now a lot of people are expected to go back and become part of that zoo, should we call it? It's not easy. It's really not easy. If you can do your work from home, I'm a very liberal person. If you can get your job done from home with all the Zoom meetings, with everything else that's available to you through technology, that's what you should do. I'm not saying, which just came to my mind, is that guy from CNN who was doing some obscene things during a CNN business meeting. No, nothing like that. Keep your clothes on, keep your hands on the keyboard and get yourself going. Um, I've often thought about the office affairs, okay? What about the guy or the woman who went to work every day all happy and excited and hair done just right and makeup and everything else because they were meeting someone at work that perked them up and that's why they were happy and that is gone. It's totally gone. It's, uh, there's so many different versions of the work situation that and jobs and how jobs have changed and will continue to change now. It's just hard to say. When you live in a city like New York, we all know about the major cities. There was a mass exodus to the suburbs or to local states that are drivable if you have to get in there. Um, my friends who live in the city have told me it's coming back. Of course, we know the restaurants are back. The shows will soon be coming back. Everything is starting to open up and come back. Schools are coming back. But sticking to the workplace, okay? I, I don't know, I'm not your boss, but I believe that if you can do your job, do it successfully and not have to commute and not have to deal with office BS, then that's the way to go. Uh, every company is going to be different depending on who's running what departments. Uh, I, there's project managers, there's managers above project managers. I guess I talk a lot based on corporate America because I am, if you get on the parkway and you go down and around the bend and through the tunnel, there you are at Wall Street. So I'm not far and I do meet a lot of people from there. Uh, an interesting thing also about going back to work is a lot of people are going back to work, but they're also trying to create, because they've had this year, they're trying to create their own businesses. It's nice to have your own business and run it, but is it cost effective? Can you afford to? Can you afford a loss in the first year? You have to do a nice business plan. You have to see if it's worth your time and energy. 
it's really very important if you want to go it on your own. And some people are, some people aren't. I'm happy for the people in the uh, service businesses. Like I'm friends with the women across the street. They do hair and nails and all of that. You know, it's been hard on them. Uh, then, of course, there's the food industry. And I live in Bay Ridge, which is just like living in Manhattan. Every block has another restaurant, a little one to a giant catering hall. So there's that. It's changing. Everything is changing. People don't know what's going to work. Okay, for now, everybody I know who owns a restaurant, indoors, outdoors, whatever, is looking to sock away enough money so that if something happens again, I don't want to use a C word for that because I really think COVID's dead anyway, but there's the mutants, the variants, whatever you want to call them, the mutations. And if that happens again, people now know what I've always said forever and ever, be prepared. Always be prepared for everything and anything. Okay, that's good to know. So whether or not you're going to like going back to work and the commute is really your call. I mean, it's, it's everybody's different. Some people don't mind the, oh, in New York, in the cities, it takes us to public transportation. The buses seem to be okay, but they're very slow. And for some people, they're not the most affordable, really, people who are living paycheck to paycheck. But then there's the subways, which if you read anything in the news or you watch our governor or our mayor or whatever, crime is up, I don't know how much percent, but a lot. I mean, I just don't understand why they can't fix it. But of course, I, I feel they can't fix most things. So why should they fix that? I mean, you can't actually put a cop on every subway car in the city. It's impossible. You can put surveillance cameras, which help. And then my clients pointed something out to me. Suppose they capture the man who grabbed my purse and ran out the subway. I don't go on subways, but suppose they caught him. He's not going to jail for very long anyway. He'll be out in the day. And everybody says this, that I would, you know, in the United States, certainly in New York, the jails are overflowing. They don't want a lot of people there because everybody's thinking maybe COVID or something like COVID is going to happen again. So is there solutions to these things? I don't really don't think so. I think people who can work from home, not the ones with like a bunch of little kids running around. Well, remember the children are gonna go back to school and now camps will open, they're gonna go back to camp, hopefully, uh, wherever children go, or there's play dates, so one mom watches three children, the next day another mom does that. You know, there's ways to work things out without driving yourself crazy. But I do feel that if you can work from home and you can set up a space, like I have a space, small, but it's nice and it works for me and it's quiet. If you can do something like that, then that's really the better way to go. I don't think humans were meant to go out far to work and have to commute and pay for whatever it costs them to run their vehicles, their cars, people I know are going electric, but it still costs money. It's not cheap to have a car and drive back and forth work, especially if we're talking about big commutes, an hour and a half to two hours a day. That's awful. I mean, it's just terrible. I was on the parkway last week when people are starting to go back into the city to drive in. And where, do, where does everyone put their car? Okay. I know that our governor is doing things to improve the Long Island Railroad and, and you know, extend it. And he's working very hard at it. That's what he talks about. Everybody seems to be into infrastructure, which is most important. It's funny. When, when I come over the Verrazano Bridge, I sometimes visualize not the exit I get off, you know, to go into the streets or there's another exit to the parkway, but some exit that you could go directly from the Verrazano, continue right on and find yourself in Manhattan. Oh, it's just a fantasy to save people time and energy. It's really the commuting, it's the stress, as if we're not stressed enough, anxiety levels are off the chart, people are not sure they can work anymore. I've had a couple of clients who came here and told me, I don't think I can handle the pressure of going to work and being at work. People need money, this has to be done. So. 
uh, going back to work after COVID poses a whole new set of issues. And it's for you to work out if you live with somebody, how you're going to work that out financially, how you're going to work out the stress levels. You don't want to be like most of the people in the city who they go from the, the high stress jobs, not even in the city anywhere, high stress jobs to I'm going to meditate, okay, get rid of the stress, or, or I'm going to work out and that'll get rid of my stress or run or jog or be in nature, whatever people do to get rid of the stress. You want to try, if even a little bit possible, to make your work situation something that works for you and your family, if you live with family, and just affords you a space to breathe. I mean, if you got some affair going on at work, let it go. That person's probably married or has another partner or something anyway. It's really not as important as your emotional, personal life. It's about setting it up. That's how, now, remember I say everything is programmed. So if you're programmed to set up your work situation so that it's good for you, so you don't become, uh, what's happening to people is they're all going on disability, social security, they try to milk it as much as they can. They tell me all these things they do. That's fine and good, but it only lasts so long. And it depends how many dependents you have. If it's just you alone, fine it may be enough money for you to live on but if it's you and a spouse and you're she's not working or he's not working you got problems and then you add on children and sometimes you know in some cultures even here in the united states um a couple's parents live with them and it's it you know what it comes down to it comes down to money and money creates the panic and anxiety and stress because i don't know too many people who wouldn't rather just stay home and enjoy their families and enjoy the time now in the summer and just take a summer off. Uh, teachers knew it. And Lord knows teachers really, really need it after the school years they've been through. So anyway, I, I can only tell you this, COVID has changed the equation on how jobs are, what they are, what they're worth, and what you should do about it. So you have to sit back you have to talk to whoever you need to talk to about it, and you have to make some clear decisions. Uh, a lot of people have lost jobs, businesses have closed, and then you're like, well, what are we supposed to do, Ellie? You know, it's like the restaurant's open, but, you know, here in the Northeast, it was a washout. We were waiting for Memorial Day weekend, like on the Jersey Shore. We make so much money doing that, but we had to close down our stores because it didn't just rain, it poured for, I think, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yesterday lightened up a little bit, but by yesterday, people are driving home already. So it's hard. There are no answers. Okay. I'm really, once again, I'm at that juncture where I'm saying, I hope you find solutions, but they're not easy. And I hope you find solutions that are not stressful. If you want, you could sit down and make a list of everything about going out to work. And what's the most stressful things you can do that doesn't mean you're going to rip it off and say, yeah, it's done. Okay. You know, don't go into this, I'm going to manifest the perfect job thing. Don't go into, I'm going to manifest anything. Whatever is meant to be is meant to be. But COVID has shifted everything. And it will continue to change. We will never go back. You've heard this. We will never go back to the way things were before. Okay? It, it, for the most part. Not everybody, but most. But do we really need to go back to that? No, we really don't. Um, so we push forward. If you are someone who doesn't want to go back to the workplace because of the commute, because you have to spend money in the cleaners for clothes, or all, all the reasons, all the reasons, then so be it. But you got to do a workaround and life has to go on. And since you've had this year or so, year, 15 months to think about what am I going to do and how am I going to do it? You've possibly have come up with some solutions. Remember that doing a startup business today, okay, is not always the best way to go. Everybody wants a startup because everybody feels that their product or service is going to be great. If it's meant to be, it'll happen anyway, but startup businesses are not easy unless you've got a certain twist to them, something different than everybody else in that business who is doing the same thing. 
So go slowly, go carefully. But if you got to go to work, you got to go to work. And that's it. If you got to put up with some micromanaging jerk, what are you going to do? And if you get back to work and find that things are not the way you left them, then, you know, it, you could look for another job. People are getting jobs. Uh, I think that uh, unemployment runs out. I guess it goes by the state in September, but start planning now. I'm a planner. Plan ahead. Say, no, I'm not going to take off the whole summer, September. I'll look for a job. That's not a good way to reason things out. So COVID and the workplace, once again, it's probably not as you remember it. People are more anxious. The workplace affair probably is over. And don't look to make another trouble in your life by starting another workplace relationship. They don't usually work. I mean, I've read thousands of people who are involved with the boss or the coworker or whatever, and there's always disappointments. There really are. And when the women come to me, they just want to know, should I leave my husband for whoever? I, I use my generic name, John. That's my generic name. Should I leave my husband for John, who I work with? And depends on the husband, depends on the relationship, and a lot of factors, but that's for another day. Okay, so here we are. Prepare to go back to work if you haven't already. Prepare for changes and good luck. So all I can say, enjoy what you can of the summer because uh, these viruses to me, I know that the, the, they said that these viruses flare in the summer or they go away. To me, these viruses go up in the cold weather. They like the cold weather. They are not too crazy about the warm weather. Go out and enjoy. And if you're in a large group of people and you're feeling maybe yes, maybe no, carry a, a mask in your pocket or your pocketbook or whatever you tote with you and just put it on. And you know what? No one's going to laugh at you. No one's going to say, oh, that's old. Because even if they do, who cares what anybody says? Get past what anybody says. Okay. I got to run. Uh, this will be continued tomorrow. And today I just might start my first video with my friend Don. So off we go. Enjoy your day.